uh, for the first part of this block, which is PIDs for Research Data Repositories. Um, we've got two great speakers representing RE3 Data Core F project. Uh, we have uh, Leah Ferguson and Nina Weisweiler from the Helmholtz Association. Um, so I hope you have your cup of tea and cake ready. Um, Leah, Nina, would you like to take us on a trip to Twin Peaks? Okay, thank you very much, Brian. And um, yeah, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. So uh, as he probably explained, my headset only works uh, one way or the other. So I can only speak uh, and not hear anyone right now. And I will turn it off uh, as soon as I have um, finished the presentation, the, uh, my part there. Um, all right, so uh, welcome everyone. And thank you very much for joining our little coffee or tea party depending on uh, what you have by your side, and to our um, talk about PIDs for repositories. Uh, right, first of all, I would like to introduce you to your hosts uh, of this session, who are um, Leah Ferguson and myself. I'm Nina Weisweiler, as you probably heard already. We both come um, from the Helmholtz Open Science Office, uh, working for mm -hmm. Helmholtz Association. And we are part of the re 3 Data CoreF team, um, where we are mainly responsible for the community building and the outreach activities. For us both, it's the first time, uh, the first Pitta Palooza we are attending ever. So we are very excited. And I must say, I'm super impressed by the amount of people who, is, uh, who are joining this festival. So now let's uh, make ourselves all comfortable and follow us into the small town of PID Twin Peaks where we shall enjoy some pie and a lot of interesting discussions, hopefully. Um, so here we have an almost original quotation from Twin Peaks. Uh, Every day, once a day, give yourself a present. Don't plan it, don't wait for it, just let it happen. It could be a catnap in your office chair, two cups of good hot black coffee, or PIDs for research repositories. This quote shall guide us through the session today, um, as we want to figure out whether you regard PIDs for research repositories rather as a trick or a treat. For that reason, we have collected several questions that will lead us through the mm. session today, um, and we will ask you them via the Crowdcast poll function. And a very big thank you also to Brian Vickery at Pence and everyone else from the Pitapalooza team for the chairing and organization and all the technical support that we got. Now, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, since we love pie almost as much as the folks from Twin Peaks, <clears throat> we have brought you some here. In fact, I can show it quickly. A wonderful mm -hmm. pie. <laughs> um, and I hope that you also have some <clears throat> delicious nibbles, some cake, and maybe a hot beverage like coffee or tea. Um, and please make sure that you either scan the QR code here on the slide um, or follow the link in the ask a question area so you can gain access to our virtual tablecloth. And we are very, um, yeah, we encourage you to write on that cloth. It's in fact just a crib pet, but that doesn't, yeah, I think the cloth uh, just fits the theme very nicely. So this one uh, will accompany our session and will give you the possibility to add further comments and points. Um, uh, to our discussion. Right. Before we start with the serious business of PIDs, um, we want to find out how familiar you all are uh, with our favorite series and to warm you up a little bit for our polls. So the first question, um, Brian, could you please put in the first question, um, which is, how familiar are you with Twin Peaks? Mm -hmm. um, so is it there? Yes, it's there. Great. Uh, for the ones who do not know Twin Peaks, um, it's a celebrated 90s series. It was created by David Lynch and Mark Frost, and it tells the story of the FBI agent Dale Cooper, who tries to solve the mystery behind the death of the young and popular Laura Palmer. So let's have a quick look. I think most of the people are um, newbies. And some people are very much into it, great. So if you haven't seen it yet, I would highly recommend you to check it out. Um, and our second question for the polls, who is your favorite character? 
so you have some time to think about this. And uh, whoever saw the series probably knows that um, in, during the course of his investigation, uh, Agent Cooper gets caught in a very confusing maze of lies, drama, and dark secrets. And we ourselves uh, hope that we can avoid slipping into that dark maze uh, on our search for repository PIDs. And that is why we are looking for your advice here. And now it's time for myself to reveal my favorite character, who is. OK, let's go. <laughs> the Lark Lady. Um, <laughs> OK, so this log will uh, now guide us through the rest of the session. And I will keep it close to me because it knows things and it has seen things. And I hope you can help us. So the Lark Lady is a great pie lover. Um, and that's why we brought you here uh, a very fresh slice of pie from the Re3 Data Diner. Um, as many of you probably know, Re3 Data is a global registry for research data repositories and data portals. And it hosts um, currently over 2,600 entries. It was launched in 2012 and is currently run as a data site service hosted at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Um, funders, publishers, and also different scientific organizations worldwide refer to research data within their guidelines and in their policies, and they um, reuse metadata from research data for uh, research infrastructures. Um, also, researchers, of course, are looking uh, for appropriate uh, repositories within research data to store or discover any data. All right. Um, to enhance the service of Re3 Data, the German Research Foundation, the DFG, DFG um, is providing funding for three more years to the CARF project, um, which we represent here right now. The main goal of Re3 Data CARF are um, to develop a new service model for Re3 Data and also the provision of reliable and customizable subscriptions, uh, sorry, descriptions uh, of uh, research data repositories which includes the update and expansion of the metadata schema. To develop further options for automated exchange between services um, and especially machine-to-machine -machine communication, for example, to automatically include certification info from the Core Trust Seal or any other certification uh, organization. Also to provide more sophisticated functions for monitoring and recommendation, for example, to recommend fair enabling repositories and of course, we're working, working on several other things too. Um, all right, now let us get a bit more interactive. I can feel that my log is becoming a little impatient. So we have uh, four question rounds for you now. Um, and afterwards, hopefully some time for discussion and questions uh, will be left. The polls will be left open for the whole time. So you should have enough time to vote and look at them. Also, you can find them in our crypt pad too, the questions. But we ask you to only add additional uh, points there if you if you don't see your opinion or uh, input represented in the poll. Um, okay, and if you have any other any further comments, then please feel free to just add it at the end of the crib pad or the tablecloth. Um, yeah, and this is uh, the introduction for Leah to go on and start with the polls. And I'm now switching off my headset so. The sound quality might turn a bit worse um, if I speak, but I would like to hear you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Nina. Um, hi, my name is Leah, um, and I'm a great fan of Audrey Horn. Um, so please forgive my feeble attempt of trying to resemble her. Um, it's just that these days, uh, any opportunity to dress up fancy, I think, should be used. And I'm very grateful for Peter Palooza for providing and some much needed positive social interaction and this opportunity. But let's get straight into it then. Um, we are, uh, could you put on the next slide, Nina? Um, yeah, we're turning to you, our community, um, as part of the central goal of our project um, and a lot of project activity in Research Data Core F. Um, so we're interested in what your use cases look like. Um, what do you need and what do you wish for in terms of PIDs? We're turning to you for feedback here. Um, so our, our next question in the poll, if you scroll down into the polls, you can see it, um, is what are the use cases for a repository PID? 
And for this question, which you should be able to see now, um, you can only choose one option. So please make sure that you consider the one that's most important to you right now. Um, just go ahead um, and click it, or if you want some more time to think about it, as Nina said, the questions will remain open. So you can also think about it some more as we go along. If you have any additions you would like to make, um, the crypt pad, um, as we discussed, is open and you can um, add information here. Um, we can talk about that um, in the following discussion. I'm going to quickly read out the options um, just so you can uh, peruse uh, them a bit more. Um, and yeah, so what are the use cases for a repository PID? A repository PID could be useful in data set citations, especially for monitoring of usage and dissemination. Or a repository PID could be useful to avoid being dependent on verified repository names or unstable URLs. And a repository PID could also allow the identification of repositories across different repository registries and could therefore help um, researchers infrastructure and open science services. Or a repository PID could provide standardized metadata about repositories. And maybe you have another option in mind. Um, that's also fine. Um, feel free to add that. Um, in the crib path then. Um, yeah, and uh, as we said, we're going to go through the questions um, slowly and you can take your time to think about it, but I think we can now move on to the next slide um, and take a look at um, the next question. So we already said, along with the log lady, we dream. And right now we're wondering, um, what repository PID solutions are your dreams made of? Um, tell us in the next poll question. So should we get PIDs for text publication repositories or for research um, data repositories? Um, so either you're of the, of the opinion that we should get PIDs for research data repositories or only for text publication repositories. Um, perhaps you want a system for both research data repositories and text publication repositories. Or maybe you think that this is um, the stupidest idea ever and we're very curious what you uh, what your reasons are for thinking that. So please let us know in the crib pad so we can work on that some more. And maybe you're a PID nerd, but you have no clue about this point. That's also fine. Um, and maybe you have another option in mind. We're very interested um, in hearing about that from you. Um, yeah, so dream big, dream of PID solutions and let us know about it. Okay, then I think we can um, yeah, we can take a short look into the polls. You can also, while um, taking uh, while taking the poll, you can already see the the other people's answers. So try not to be influenced too much by that. <laughs> Let us know what you uh, what you think about this. Um, yeah. So then, moving on. Um, if Twin Peaks has taught us anything, it's to remain curious. Um, so with the next question, we're wanting to look at PIDs in context. Um, and we've placed the pit graph here, a uh, visualization of it as an orientation um, created over by, um, by our colleagues at Freya and Datasight. And mostly we're wondering, are the PIDs what they seem or are they not? Um, so please help us find out, should a new PID system for repositories be introduced or could an existing system be used for this purpose? Um, and again, we have the options. Yes, we need a new PID um, that clearly indicates a repository. No, we don't need PID for repositories. Um, maybe you're a PID nerd, but you have no clue about this question. Um, or you want to let us know that we shouldn't reinvent the wheel and we should use a pre-existing PID system. And especially for this question, we're very curious, obviously, which one you have in mind and maybe why you think it's um, best suited um, for this task. Um, yeah, so enter your uh, your views um, in in the poll and let us know in the crypt pad um, if you have some more detail for these points. Um, great. Um, yeah, I think with this, we have um, concluded the, the poll, the main poll questions we had. Um, I don't know, we have one, sorry, we have one last poll question. <laughs> if you move to the next slide. I almost forgot Agent Cooper here. Um, so he imagines uh, heaven for pies, and um, we have our minds fixed on repository PIDs. Um, so we're asking, should a repository PID refer to a landing page with metadata or directly lead to the repository website? 
So when you imagine where PIDs go when they die, what, what do you have in mind? Um, the options uh, we've provided here are a repository PID should refer to a landing page with metadata, or a repository PID should refer directly to the repository website. Um, or maybe this does not matter to you very much, or you have another option in mind. And please, when answering this question, think of what Agent Cooper would do um, when he were asked this, if he were asked this question, um, and make him approve of, uh, of your answer as well. Great. Um, yeah, this then really concludes our poll question time. The questions will remain open, so feel free to add your, your points as we go along. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, Nina, we can now switch over to the discussion and see what additional um, ideas there are. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Nina. Um, I hope people are uh, taking part in your poll. I can see that they are. This is looking fantastic. Thank you very much. That, that, that was extremely interesting. We have one um, one general question, I think, which is um, uh, what are text publication repositories? Um, yeah, so basically what we mean by that is just uh, not for data research data repository. Um, because, of course, I mean, nowadays it's difficult to you can use the set of state line and say this is a pure data repository and this is your application repository because there's so many uh, places where um, different types of data are stored. It's very, it's very difficult to hear you, uh, Nina, at the moment. I'm sorry. I, I think I'll try to, to speak a little bit louder. Um, I don't know if uh, is it, can you understand me better? And maybe I can shortly take, um, so what we mean by text, um, text publication repositories is text-based um, publications, so articles, um, and uh, we, we've kind of contrasted this here with the main data repositories that contain data sets uh, as opposed to, um, yeah, text as articles and text-based publications. Does that make it, is that the way that the question was intended or is it still... Um, still open no i think that's i think that's right um you took um this covers um research data repositories in many many different subjects where are you seeing the most um uptake for something like this so far is there a particular set of disciplines Um, so Nina, um, feel free to add um, also in the chat, maybe if you have something to add, but um, with your data um, sees itself as a registry for um, all disciplines. So there's no particular um, selection made. It's, it's, um, and I think in this sense, we're also asking the question of the repository PID. Um, so kind of overarching view for, for this um, PID um, <laughs> reference. Thank you. Um, we have a, another question. Um, which existing PID system you think about using for repositories? So maybe I can try to answer to this. Um, so right now, um, Wikidata is using DOI system, um, which is a, a workaround that uh, works uh, quite well. But the problem is that um, the metadata, of course, is not particularly uh, created to describe a repository. And uh, for that reason, um, at Re3Data Kareth, we are uh, looking into this uh, question if it makes sense to set up a new uh, PID system for repositories. Um, but this is also something, I mean, a, a PID only works if the community uses it. So that's why we also want to collect some opinions and uh, yeah, uh, figure out if this is something that would be helpful for the community. Uh, thanks. Um, Leah, could you maybe just um, paraphrase um, what was said? I think I heard uh, DOI currently um, as a workaround, um, but the metadata doesn't really uh, sufficiently describe repositories. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I do think that uh, we, we don't want to push our view onto the community. I think that the, the main point is that we're 
we're asking for what the community would actively be using and what would uh, work best in terms of um, yeah, usability, but also um, yeah, worldwide use, basically. Um, so that's, I think, why we're asking this question rather open-mindedly and we don't want to already push you into direction. And um, obviously there is a system in place um, or there is a, a way that um, we are handling or registries are handling this uh, nowadays. Um, but um, yeah, as we, as we all know, there's always room for improvement. So I think that's why we're investigating this and why we're interested in hearing from the community on what um, um, maybe pros and cons are with current users and potential future options. Great, thank you. Um, is there, there are no more questions that I can see? We've got about one minute before we break um, for the uh, for the next session. Um, is there more that, um, uh, the, for example, publishers um, could be doing to promote or support what you're doing? I can try again. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so of course, um, for publishers, I, I think uh, it's, um, yeah, they they can uh, refer to um, repositories that are, uh, that are suitable for storing research data, especially in a, in a fair way. Um, so there are also already, I think, se several recommendations in place. Um, and for them, it makes sense to have, I think, either a stable name for repositories or uh, maybe even a PID. Um, we have discussed this topic already in a workshop um, last November. And uh, I think that for, uh, yeah, for publishers, most important is that they can, um, that they have like a way to refer to a repository that is uh, uh, unified and it doesn't really matter if it's a PID or if it's like a stable name, um, but the most important part is I think that the, the repositories can be referred to in a, in a unique way. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Nina, thank you for struggling through with your headset. Uh, uh, Leah, thank you very much, the, both of you. That's a really interesting um, presentation um, there. will possibly be more questions over on the Slack channel later on for, for the session Q&A. So hopefully you'll be able to dip in and answer some, some questions over there. Um, but otherwise, um, thank you both very much. Uh, and uh, we'll take a very quick break now to uh, get the next set of speakers for the session on. Thank you both. Thank you. And maybe just as a, as a last uh, few words, thank you a lot for joining our session today. Um, we hope that you enjoyed the discussions as much as we did and hopefully as much as you enjoyed the pie or the pie that you might be enjoying later. Um, if you have any other questions or want to get in contact with us, um, please enter your email address in the CryptPad or just email us. The slides have already been published on Synodo in the Pitapalooza 2021 community. And we look forward to hearing from you and discussing this further. Thanks a lot. And thanks, Brian and Ed, for organizing. Thank you.